Hi, I'm David Fleming from Disciples United, a ministry that's focused on Jesus, advancing his kingdom and preparing his disciples. Now in this YouTube series titled Learning to Pray Like Jesus, we're studying the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. And this week we're looking specifically at verse 12, so let's look at that verse together. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 we read, And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And in Luke 11 verse 4 it reads, Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. So the main difference is that Matthew has the word debts while Luke uses the word sins. So let's talk about this for a second. Debts and debtors is a financial term dealing with, of course, debt. Figuratively, it speaks of a moral debt due to sin. Thus, to commit a sin against God or against someone else incurs a moral debt. Now, it's very interesting that Matthew, as a previous tax collector that dealt with money all the time, he used an accounting term when he spoke of sin. Now, the word sin literally means to miss the mark. It means that we have missed God's righteousness. It's like shooting an arrow at a target, but you miss it. Well, we didn't even get close. We have rebelled against God's standard of holiness, and we have missed the mark. Often when not a witness to people about Jesus and tell them that he came to redeem us and forgive us for our sins, many of them sadly reply, oh, I'm fine. I I'm a good person. They have no idea. They don't realize that when they stand before God in eternity, they're going to be compared to Jesus. Now, I know when you compare yourself to some people, you might feel good about yourself. But compared to Jesus, come on, we all fall short. We don't even get close. So thank God if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he will not only forgive us, but he wipes away all of our sins. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, there's two extreme teachings concerning God's forgiveness. Now, there's a message called the hyper grace message that teaches that the moment that you repent, uh, that Jesus will save you and that all of your sins, past, present, and future, have been forgiven. So you never have to ask the Lord to forgive you after you've been saved. That's one extreme. Then there's this other stream where people are constantly afraid that they're going to lose their salvation if they mess up and they sin. You know, this causes people to live in such fear and condemnation. But these are two extremes. Now, there's a balance that we need to strive for, and that balance is clearly given to us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Let me read that to you. It's been such a great blessing to my own life, and I know it's going to be a great blessing to you. Here it is. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Now, this verse is speaking to us about having a relationship with Jesus. We're constantly walking with Jesus in the light. But what emphasizes this is the verbs that are used in this verse are put in the Greek present tense. Now, whenever you have a Greek verb that's put in the present tense, it's talking about continuous action. The verb walk, but if we walk in the light, this is put in the present tense. So it's talking about constantly walking with Jesus in the light. And then the word fellowship is also put in the present tense. So the fellowship that we have with Jesus is constant. It's unbroken fellowship with Jesus. And so is the word purify. That also is put in the Greek present tense. So it's talking about that the blood of Jesus is constantly purifying us from all sin. Why? Because we are constantly walking with Jesus in the light. What a blessing! So that's the, that's the balance that we're striving for. Just walk with Jesus, because we know that as we walk with Jesus in the light, that we're safe. You know, there's so much more to learn from the Lord's Prayer, but 
we don't have enough time to get into it today, but so join me tomorrow and we'll learn more about what it means to be forgiven and some more of the powerful truths that are taught to us about forgiveness in the Lord's Prayer. So I'll see you tomorrow.